Welcome! In this video, David W2LNX discusses getting started with digital modes on HF. So this is the, the general layout. This is pretty generic. We have the transceiver and we have an SWR meter connected to your tuner. Now presumably your SWR it indicates you know, that it's a good SWR because the tuner is doing its job. Uh, and then we have an important piece of equipment, it's not expensive, called an isolator, an un, -un. It's unbalanced to unbalanced. It's important because coax is inherently unbalanced, and unless you have a perfect, balance, perfect antenna at the end of the coax, you're going to have common mode currents on the outside of the coax coming into your radio, coming into your computer and screwing things up, and locking up your radio, or locking up your, actually locking up your computer. So that's very nice, very useful. But actually use the SWR meter as a VU meter, any audio people. So use it to set the audio level, and I watch the wiggles of the data going out. Okay, so it serves two purposes, the SWR, but of course the indication that the signal is going out. And then we have the audio interface and the rig control connected to a computer at home. It could be your desktop computer or, your, or a laptop, a more portable operation. Uh, when I operate, I like to be completely self-contained. No internet, no mains. It's, well, you know, this, this is, this is uh, 36 ampere hours, so I did simple math. I could do key down for five hours uh, at 10 watts. I don't think I'll need that, but so we have enough power. Okay, so sp specific. So I have two radios. I'm going to bring what you see over there is the FT857D. It's a very popular radio. I don't buy new radios. I like to buy older radios and kind of read what the reputation. So, you know, wines, certain vintages, certain years from a, from a vintner are better than others. Same thing with radios. So the 857 has a huge reputation. People love it, so I say, you know, I gotta have one of those. Plus it's small. I'm a sucker for small radios. I'm like, smaller the better. It's that something about the cuteness element about it. And the IC706, I bought that 10 years before that. Uh, I mean, the radio is 10 years older. You look at the copyright. Um, and so the, the SWR meter is it's a small SWR meter, the MFJ860. And I like to use an automatic antenna tuner, not the mated antenna tuner that goes with the radio, because it's only meant for that particular radio. And that's, you know, I like to have an automatic antenna tuner. Uh, so I use, uh, what, I, what I have over there is the older model, the LDGZ100. It's got a cute plastic case. But, you know, plastic is not a very good RF shield. So they came out with the plus in a nice metal box. But it does come with two cables, uh, one called uh, the YHCC for the FT-857. So when you press the tune button, it activates transmit on the radio so it'll drive the tuner. And same thing for the, uh, for the 706, the cable. And that's the model number from Radio Works for the line isolator. My favorite antenna, the dummy load. Maybe we need to have a new contest, the dummy load challenge. See who you, you can take the cover off the dummy load, but you can put the dummy load up high and see who you can work. Why not? JT65, which Robert will be talking about next. And of course, your antenna. So, the sound interface, Tigertronics, is the best device for getting started. Um, and it has um, a built-in box, that's, that's the key. I can tell you from experience, getting rig control to do the PTT, push to talk, or do the frequency control, it's a pain in the neck. When I get to that section, I'll tell you what I found. Um, you get that set up, but they really scored. It's a simple device, they sell them for like hotcakes, Apparently, if you go on the website, they look, we, have, we have robots that build these things, so it's good reliability, you know, good manufacturing reliability. And um, they have uh, cables for just about every radio not ever sold. But most radios, uh, some of the newer radios, when I found this out, I, I was astounded. The three big manufacturers, the Japanese manufacturers, Icom and Yezu, and uh, Kenwood agreed on the mini DIN, six pin mini DIN connector as the standard, to have a standard pinout for data. Holy mackerel, I mean, they actually agreed on something? It's one of the few times I fell off the chair. That's remarkable. So what I use is this thing, 
Both radios have the same connector in the back, so it's very handy. So you get the six pin mini thin data cable, and um, Tiger Tracks makes this cable. So you can search uh, an HRR on that model number. And they have a matching jumper cable, a jumper module that you open it up, put it in, and it matches. But that's pretty much generic. If you buy a radio with that connector, uh, you're fine. It turns out the 706 has two kinds of connectors, the mini DIN and the accessory, the 13-pin accessory connector. So I had to buy the cable for that too, which is kind of interesting because you can connect two sound cards to the same radio. Interesting, I haven't tried that. Anyway, now, grid control cable. You go on Amazon and you type in CT62, and you can search, um, and there's various manufacturers, different chips inside, and I found uh, that the FTDI-based USB to serial converters are the, seem to work the best. I've never had a problem with FTDI. <coughs> FTDI is a company out of Ireland. They, I think they were one of the first ones. It, it's the great devices. Uh, I happen to like these cables because in addition to being reliable, easy to install, most Windows installations will do the automatic install, and if you can't, you can go to the FTDI, FTDI.com website. No, FTDI something. No, FTDI is FTD Florist Inc. Oops, this is FTDI something else. Um, Google search, FTDI driver. They'll take you to the right place. And then you can install it and it works. Dave, um, one thing I want to mention about that. Yeah. There's a ton of counterfeit cables out there that claim they're that, but they're really not. Ah. And Well, this is from Valley. Uh, enterprises. And that makes a difference. Don't go. Oh, oh, don't yeah, go counterfeit the is a big deal. Yeah. Because it's probably counterfeit, no matter what they say on the, on the label. Well, I bought the, there's a, a six, a, a one meter and a ten foot cable, and I have good results with FTDI. Uh, I actually made my own little cable because you can buy FTDI little breakout boxes, little breakout boards, like ten bucks. And I attach a, a, a eighth inch stereo connected to it, and it works. CIB, I tried it, it works. This uses a stereo connector for the uh, ICOM. That uses a funky eight pin MIDI DIN connector. Uh, not, a, not exactly readily available. Uh, oh, TX RX, very useful. Um, and so you can set the drive level. And I'll show you how to use that when we get to it. And delay, that's for the box. Um, okay, so um, I have I use Windows 7 for demo purposes. I use Windows 7 because most people use that. I use personally. I use FL Digi. I use Linux as my primary operating system. But I'll use Windows. I use Mac. I'm not proud. You know, if you need a hammer to drive a nail, you use a hammer. If you need a screwdriver to drive a, you know, you gotta get the right tool for the right job. So it's this operating system that drives the software. So digital mode programs, I like FL Digi. It is uh, written by, oh, I can never remember the call sign. I never remember W1 something. Anyway, FL Digi, download, you'll go right to the website. It's by an elderly gentleman and a team of people who actively maintain this software. It is the Swiss Army knife of just about every single digital modes of uh, known to man, except JT65, that's the only little world. Uh, maybe a couple other modes. There's a European mode, which is not quite kosher in this country. Silly. Um, and then Robert will do JT65. Um, I'm, I'm a newbie at that, and I felt uncomfortable to teach it when I used it only for a week. And, and your digital modes, there you are, is M Radio Deluxe. So, and that, so we have a PSK31. So um, you need to set up your radio. So you got to look at the manual. This happens to be for my radio over there, the FT-57D. So you got to set the CAT. That's what they call um, computer something tuner. Um, the, the CAT stands for something. It's the acronym for the computer control over serial. Um, so you set it for 9600 DPS. You got to set it for CAT mode. Um, Where's my pointer again? You gotta set it to cat mode. Um, digital mode, PSK31U. Ah, power. So if you're running Q 
QRP, you set it for 10. Why 10? I thought QRP was five. Well, hold that thought. I'll explain that when we get to it. Or you set it to 100, 100 watts. And you turn off tuner ATAS, that's the automatic, and like a, what is it, a screwdriver antenna? Anybody has an ATAS? It's some kind of laser device, mobile device for, for their, this radio. Now, very important, you, you select your display to display to show ALC automatic, what is it? Level control, control. limiting control? Level control. <clears throat> Here's a big idea. This is true for all radios. You don't want to distort. <clears throat> Especially with digital modes, you don't want to distort. Because if you distort digital modes, you're going to splatter, and the other side won't be able to decode. It's going to, and you can see it on the waterfall. It looks like crap. You can actually see it. I once got a screenshot from the Mix W was king back like 10 years ago. It sent me back a screenshot how I was splattering. And he told me what to do. And I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> what the person explained to me, and I'll tell you, is you said it. I was running, um, I set it for 50 watts, because full, you know, full, it's a key down mode, 100% duty cycle, so you derate it 50%. So I was running 50%, 50 watts, but I had turned up the audio level to push 50 watts. Guess what? I was distorting. He said, no, no, no. You set it for 100 watts, set uh, the audio level from over here, the TX, to the volume control in the sense, the output level. And, and there's another place in FL Digi or your favorite digital modes program, so that the, the SWR meter, which we're using as a VU meter, shows half the output power. So when I do digital, when I do QRP digital modes, I set it for 10 watts, and I set my drive so the thing wiggles around 5 watts. But more importantly, I don't show any indication in the uh, ALC. So what you do is you, just as it starts to indicate, you back off, and then you're in the sweet spot. And you see Mark is nodding his head. <laughs> so you're 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 okay. Now I had to, you know, you had. You have to learn these things, but hopefully this will accelerate all, you know, all the mistakes that I've done, you don't have to do them. You can make your own mistakes. Okay, so, uh, oh, same thing with setting up the transceiver for the 706. That's an older radio. It's much simpler. I set it, uh, packet is set for 1,200. If there's two pins, two, there's two, what is it, two input pins? Or two, you have to configure the radio for 1,200 bits packet, AFSK. So, because what you do is you're feeding it audio from the sound card. That's the idea. And then the CIV, that's what uh, ICON calls their interface, their serial interface. I set it for 19.2 uh, kilobits per second. And then quick set mode, oh, I set it for either H for 100 watts or 1 for 10 watts. That's, that's a little bit different there. So it's a simpler radio. Um, I'll set the transceiver mode to USB. Okay. Now, Windows, fun and games. OK, so you stick in the USB. How do you know if it's there? So the device manager is your friend. So I always have uh, the control panel is actually pinned to the dock so I can get to the device manager quickly so I can see if I plug in a device. Hello, did it see it? And usually you hear a ding dong. That's a pretty good indication. So there it is. Where's my pointer? USB, your audio device. So make a note of that. That's our. Our signal link. Um, from my experience, I've yet to have a computer not recognize a signal link. They use the chip that the audio chip they're using is the most generic chip out there. Um, so it seems to work. Um, so you right click, <coughs> and thank you, Robert, for pointing out a bug, whether it's a bug or a feature that's open for debate. So you click, right click on the icon speaker, select the recording device. Um, so there is a microphone. Ah, yeah, USB. And either you have a number one, a number two, a number three. But anyway, what you're looking for, you're keying on USB audio device. And so here it is. Uh, generic USB audio. Good. And then we set levels. So when the first time I brought it up, plus 30 dB. That's a preamplifier, a digital preamplifier. Holy mackerel, it just wipes everything out. So. Um, and, and Robert was good enough to uh, uh, alert us to a, to a series of emails. 
you gotta set it down to zero, or as I find with experience, sometimes you gotta bring it up just a little bit. But once you set it, it remembers. So that's a one-time setting. Okay. So uh, I had actually, you know, what I was doing, I needed like plus five, and the display looked uh, coding better. Okay, advanced. And this is from uh, Joe Taylor in his notes. It's set it up for 4,800 as opposed to 44.1. 44.1 kilo samples per second for CD. He says, do it for DVD, a little bit better. Most song cards can do that. Um, anyway, and correspondingly for playback, there would be the speaker, uh, the USB speaker, audio speaker, and again, uh, 4,800 kilo samples per second, 16 bit. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, one channel, we're doing mono, not stereo, <coughs> mono. <coughs> this actually works. Um, so, now we're going to your digital modes program, as I said, I'm showing you FL Digi. So you're doing the audio. So there's a series, there's a bunch of audio devices. So yeah, so, so these are, this are uh, pop-up boxes, and you select <coughs> USB audio for input, capture or microphone, or playback uh, audio. And um, at the bottom, I think it's in the right-hand bottom of Metal Digi, this is adjustable. This is whole numbers, and these are, these are decimal numbers. The double arrow is a whole number, a whole integer, and this is the decimal number. So you can accept the audio level uh, output. So you have two places to control. But generally, I set it for minus six, and I use the audio volume control on the signal link to set my setting. You want to set this adjust at the very end of the, the range of the pop. You know, it's an old-fashioned pop, you know, potentiometer. So I set it so that I can adjust it somewhere in the middle. So, it's, that's, so there it is. Okay, we send the test uh, message. Just click on the CQ macro. That's the first macro. Uh, more about that later. Uh, dummy load. So the purpose of dummy load is to get everything set up. It's amazing how things get misadjusted when you travel. So you gotta set everything up. When you know it works with, correctly with the dummy load, then you can connect it to your antenna. If, if, the ante if, if you wanna remove any doubt, that is it the antenna, is it the radio, hmm, what's going on here? So you divide and conquer. Um, so I set the TX on the signal to just before uh, the ALC indication. Five minutes? 10, 10. ten. Oh, okay, thank you, two hands. Okay, we're doing, we're very, we're doing very well. Uh, SWR meter should be about half the hour power setting and wiggle slightly so you get that nice wiggle. Okay. Uh, so macros, um, so that, 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 that you right click on the uh, various, the CQ button, uh, answer button, QSO button, okay. you can do whatever you want. Some people don't like to use macros. I like to use macros, but also engage people in the conversation. But be mindful that not everybody lives in an Anglophone country. You know, like people in Cuba, they go macro one, macro two, macro three. And that corresponds to the function keys on your computer. Function F1, F2, F3, F4, all the way up to F10. So you can custom, you can have a BRAC file, you know. So. The there is a comment for that. You know, it's interesting. You, you get speak up? In, what's interesting with that macro is that there was international stations, people you know can't speak English, but they you can have a QSR. That's right. Because of these macros, so it's actually open. For, for them, it's, it's, it's right. Um, it's useful. Okay, now, setting rig control. So, uh, you open up the device manager, you, you plug it in, and oh, there it is, it showed up. So, um, if you have a very modest station, uh, or if you're running, let's say, you park yourself on, let's say, 20 meters PSK, you're there. Um, but if you're doing contesting or doing, if you need to jump around, then rig control is certainly useful because right from the software, with a mouse, you can change bands. And when you transmit, your automatic antenna tuner will do its thing. Now, if you have a resident antenna, the, the antenna tuner shouldn't, shouldn't be doing its thing. So, um, so right click properties and, uh, yeah, FTDI, my friend FTDI. Um, so, going back into FL Digi, uh, and that took a little bit of experimenting, but this, this is like cookbook. This works. 
there's two ways of setting, uh, controlling the, uh, the radio. There's a software library called Hamlet. It's a third party program. It's open source, and I got integrated into, into uh, FL Digi. And you s select your favorite radio, the radio that you're using. Now, don't be scared by the word beta. If it works, it works. It doesn't matter what it says. Um, and you know what the COM port is from before. Uh, this corresponds to the rig control board rate that you set. Uh, I find a one stop it, two stop it seems to work. Click initialize. When the green and red LEDs on the cables from Valley Enterprises are flickering, it's on the knee. You kind of have to look underneath or see the reflection off a shiny table. If it's flickering, you're good. It's interrogating the radio. What's your, what's your frequency? Or if you do change it on the, the software, it'll give a command to change a set command, and then it'll do get commands. What is your frequency? And it happens oh, a couple times a second, so that's very useful. Um, if you don't get blinking, you have a problem. Um, and similar for the 706, same deal, different devices, different COM port, this corresponds to the LED also. Uh, the, the red and green LEDs are flickering. Now, so if you change the tuning knob, the display on the upper left hand, upper left hand corner, should reflect over here almost instantaneously. Obviously, the faster the board rate, the serial rate, the faster it will respond. And likewise, you can click on this. Uh, you can use a scroll wheel on a digit. You put the mouse over a digit and use your scroll wheel, it'll change it. Or if you, this is where this fine tip pointer comes in handy. If you tip, click on top of the seven, top of the digit, it increases. If you click on the bottom of that number, it decreases. Oh, handy. So that's for people who don't have a scroll wheel. Oh, that was a nice discovery. So uh, that's kind of nice. And there's a little lookup table. Uh, so if you click on this, it will jump to that frequency. So you can quickly change bands just by clicking on that. But there's a quirk on 857. It reads, so you got what it does, it sets it to USB. Well, that's nice. USB expects audio input from the mic, it, disengaging the, the, uh, da the data connector in the back, the mini the data connector. So you got to set, reset the transceiver mode back to DIG, which stands for Digi. Five minutes, all right. So uh, the user, well, that's easy. Hey, Five minutes. What? Bruce has a question. No, no, that was my five-minute warning. Five minutes. It's a, it's a full hand, five I'm fingers. No, no, I, it, this is by pre-arrangement. Thank you, Bruce. So my favorite antenna. Ah, this is all the user settings. So when you transmit, you don't want to just sit at an empty, looking at an empty screen. So you turn on monitor transmit sig signal so you can see, so you can monitor your own waterfall, your own transmission. Uh, uh, set the screen height. But that's up to user preferences. Um, and then you got to re restart the program. So apparently it cuts, writes it to a file and it leaves it back in again. So um, what else is there? Ah, PSK31. So lots and lots of modes. 